So the, the, the genetics that we've been doing is pretty simple. We just, you know, pun up squares and a single trait that's controlled by just one gene, which is either dominant allele or recessive allele. But honestly, um, most characteristics are more complicated than that. Okay? It's not just a simple dominant recessive and there's one gene for a certain trait. In a lot of cases, um, there's actually many genes for a certain trait. For example, this diagram here with these rabbits, the fur color of rabbits isn't just controlled by one single gene. It actually, um, there's multiple genes and there's multiple alleles. So there's not just a dominant and recessive with rabbit fur color. There's actually a bunch of different possibilities. And that's shown here. So you see this albino rabbit has two of these recessive little c genes. But there's also this little c h gene. And there's also this big c gene. Okay? And so there's multiple genes that are making up, multiple alleles making up this trait. And so that means there's a wide variety of fur colors in these rabbits, depending on which, which of the genes these rabbits inherited, they could be a whole bunch of different fur colors. Another example is in humans. Humans are blood type. Do you know, anyone know their blood type? I'm B, I think I'm B. I don't know, man, and I should know it. I'm B positive. If you donate blood, it tells you in like the app, uh, I'm type B blood. Exactly. It's not good or bad. It just kind of is. Um, and there's more than just two types of blood. There's A, there's a, there's an allele for type A blood, an allele for type B blood, and then there's an allele for type O blood. So there's three different versions. Yeah, type O blood can be given to anyone. or A, B, or O, yep. We won't get into the details there. But that means because there's these three different alleles, there's several different types of blood that you can have. So that's multiple alleles. There's also something called sex-linked traits. Sex-linked traits are these characteristics that are carried on um, the Y chromosome. Uh, I'm sorry, on the X chromosome. So if you remember, males have what two sex chromosomes usually? Um, X and Y. Correct. And females? X, X. Two Xs, yeah. Um, and so if a trait is only found on the X chromosome, then males only get one of them. And so if there's a certain characteristic and the allele for it is on the X chromosome, typically what that means, it'll be more common in males, more common in males than it is in females. An example of this is colorblindness. Colorblindness, do you know anyone that's colorblind? So colorblindness is when- My computer. Your computer is when you can't perceive certain colors. They okay, typically reds, okay, and greens, blues, sometimes depending. And um, it's a sex-linked trait. It's a, a an allele, okay, that's recessive, but it's only found on the X chromosome. So what that means is males they'd only need to get one of these colorblind genes and they will be colorblind because it's recessive. Females, in order to be colorblind, have two different, have to get two different alleles. They have to have um, two of them that are wrong. Like they have to get two of these colorblind alleles, yeah. Males only have to get one. 
So it's more common in males. It's easier to get one of those alleles than it is to get two. Mm -hmm. Also, another factor is that it's the sperm cell that determines the sex of the offspring. Right? What? What? So remember, female, the egg cell gets half the chromosomes from its mother. What sex chromosomes can a mother give to the egg? Well, no, what, what sex chromosomes? X or Y. Can a, fem can a woman give an egg cell an X or a Y? No, they can give an X. They only have an X, right? Yeah. Every egg cell has an X chromosome in it. But males, when they produce sperm cells, what? They can go to X or Y. Right. And so half of sperm cells but have an X chromosome in them, and half of them typically have a Y chromosome. And which of those types of sperm cells fertilizes the egg will determine the sex of the child. If it's an X sperm, it will be a girl. If it's a Y sperm, it'll be a boy. So it's actually the sperm cell that determines the sex of the offspring. Yeah. Okay. Now, sometimes when we're trying to um, trace a certain characteristic through a family, we use these charts that are called pedigree diagrams. They're kind of like a family tree, but they show which members of the family have and don't have a certain characteristic, a certain trait. And so these pedigrees are drawn. Um, we, all, we have certain symbols that we use. Males are drawn as squares, females as circles. So if you have a hard time remembering that, remember like an egg is like circular kind of, so females are a circle. And if two people um, have children, they're connected side to side like this. And then their children are drawn on a line underneath them. So look at this, look at the pedigree in your notes. These two parents, how many um, daughters do they have? One. Which one's their daughter? The second one. Yes. And how many sons? One. Nope. Or two. One here and one here. And what we do is when we're trying to um, trace a certain characteristic through the family, we shade in their symbol if they have a certain trait. So if somebody, if a, a male was colorblind, we'd color in their trait. Don't raise that line. There's like two, and one is the color, and one is the circles. There's like blue and red. Yeah, this is more complicated. For our purposes, this means they have only one. If they're shaded half and half, it means they're heterozygous. They have, they have one gene for the trait and one, one allele for the trait and one allele for not having that trait. And I'm, we're going to do some practice with this. And so sometimes a pedigree diamond like, like this is done to try to figure out how a disease, for example, is being passed down in a family how a trait gets inherited from parents to offspring and so forth. Um, so I guess let's pause our note for a minute. Alrighty. Well, actually, yeah, let's pause.